Jumbo. After last day, I threw a lot at you. You had to learn about Lewis structures just for atoms based on their group number. That's easy. You had to learn about Lewis structures for simple ions. That just meant individual atoms and their charge. That's pretty easy. And then we got into Lewis structures for molecules and complex ions. And that's a little more complicated. With practice, it becomes pretty easy. But there's some important tendencies that I'd like to share with you to try to help you in terms of drawing structures, making proper molecular diagrams, and things that may help you in this course and if you take Chemistry 11. You should not have to copy this down. I think I posted a sheet or I put it into your package. But we'll see. One way or another, we'll get it to you. Now, the sad thing is this had two fantastic songs, but just for copyright issues, I had to uh, toast them. So we're going to look at number of bonds, number of lone pairs, what kind of information we should be getting from that. If we look at group four, which includes carbon and silicon, they will tend to have four bonds. When we do a molecule, they're going to have, tend to have four bonds. And that means they're not going to have any electrons left over as lone pairs around them. Now, because Lewis structures apply to covalent, we're heading over towards the non-metal side. So that's why I went from group 4 to group 5. When I look at group 5, I see that nitrogen and phosphorus should have three, three singletons, three bonding electrons, and one lone pair. And that's a tendency you should see in the molecule. When you're done, you should see they have three bonds and a lone pair left over. Look at group six, oxygen, sulfur, that kind of stuff, tellurium, and whatnot. And when you're done in a molecule, there should be two lone pairs left over on the oxygen or the sulfur, and there should be two bonds. And you kind of see a pattern four to three to two, zero to one to two. So I don't even have to tell you what group seven is going to look like. So our halogens, we drop by one, they're only going to have one bond. They're going to have three lone pairs. So most of the electrons are paired off already. Just this one that wants to form a bond. Hydrogen. Hydrogen, when we're making a molecule, hydrogen is always going to go on the outside. It can only make one bond. You would never put hydrogen in the middle. The next slide is going to talk about some tendencies as well in terms of drawing structures. It turns out elements that want more bonds are going to be in the middle. Elements that want fewer bonds are going to be on the outside. And that just is something you'll get used to with practice. I'll make sure I give you tons of practice. So, things like carbon, if carbon's around, it's probably going to be in the middle. Nitrogen's around, it's probably in the middle, unless it's bonded to something like carbon. So, hydrogen, always one bond, and since it's only one bond, it has to be on the outside of a molecule. Try to make the molecules as symmetrical as possible. Sometimes it's not really readily done, but if there's a chance to make it symmetrical, do it. It's probably going to be right. And I don't know if you're like me, but I've always been troubled by the fact that the word symmetrical is not symmetrical. Sounds like false advertising. 